So here is one other flavor of statics problem that it can be helpful to know how to solve. And that is the case of an object sitting on a ramp. So in this case, we are trying to figure out all of the forces that are in play here. And um, so in that case, the forces that we have, starting with our first step of drawing a free body diagram, we have the car, which we see here, we have a weight, which is 10 kilonewtons. So we don't have to multiply by gravity because we already have a weight. And we have friction, which is keeping the car from sliding down the ramp. And we also have the normal force, and that is a physics concept, which is basically the force that resists the car falling through the surface of the ramp. And because the car is sitting on a slanted surface, there's kind of a sneaky thing that we can do here with our axes that really helps make this problem a little bit easier and that you can see they've already laid out here, which is that we actually define the x-axis as being parallel to the surface of the ramp and we define the y-axis as being perpendicular to or normal to, as we would say in physics speak, the surface of the ramp. And by doing that, it just makes the math a little easier. So if we also do the same thing with our free body diagram, that means that if we draw our axes on our free body diagram, we end up with something that looks like this, where we have this as our x and this as our y. And now we can draw everything else on the diagram relative to that. So we've got our friction force, which is acting going opposite the x-axis to keep the car from sliding down the ramp. We have our normal force, which is acting upwards relative to the ramp to keep the car from crashing through the surface of the ramp. And then we also have the weight, which is the one thing that's not really in alignment with our axes because it is downwards relative to the actual center of the earth, which is that way. And so our angle of our weight is actually most easily defined as being this angle theta. And so our next step is to write out the vectors for all of our forces in rectangular notation. So we've got three forces here. So we can start with the normal force. And again, we use our vector notation with the little angle on the top or the little arrow, that's the word I was looking for. So in this case, we have no force for the normal acting in the x direction, it's all in the y. So we have a zero i hat. And then we are also looking at the force being completely in the y direction. So then we have an n magnitude in the j hat. For our friction force, we have that is completely in the negative x direction. So we have a negative f i hat plus zero j hat. And then our weight, which is the most complicated of the three, is going to be, and this is where it gets a little complicated because we have defined this angle as being the angle relative to negative y axis then we actually swap our sines and cosines for this part because we are drawing a triangle kind of like this and because of where our adjacent and opposite are for once the y component is actually the adjacent and the x component is the opposite and so because of that, our x component is actually going to be the sine in this case. So um, our i hat is going to be w sine theta i hat. 
and that is positive because it's going that way. And then our y component is negative going that way. So we say minus w cosine theta j hat. So now that we have our three components, we can move on to writing our summations of forces in the x and y direction. So again, our summation of forces in the x and y should always equal zero because our car is parked and not moving on the ramp. And so our summation of forces in the x is going to be looking at our zero i hat, our negative f i hat, and our w sine theta i hat. So if we write those out. Uh, we'll ignore the zero again. So we have negative f, and we can drop the i hats because all of these are x components. So negative f plus w sine theta. And then our summation of forces in the y is going to equal zero and equal all of our j hat components, which are a positive n, a zero, and a negative w cosine theta. So we have to remember not to drop that negative. So we've got an n, we'll ignore the zero and say minus w cosine theta. And again, in this case, we do not have a theta. So keeping going, our next step, since we've got these, is to solve our system of equations. And actually the way that we get our theta is from knowing the sides of the triangle. So we have this four meters and this 10 meters. And so we can use that to get our angle. So theta equals the arc tangent of four over 10 and that gives us 21.8 degrees. So there's our theta. So that's helpful. And then we can move on from there. So if we start with this summation of forces in the x, if we have zero equals negative f, we can move this over here and that will give us f equals w sine theta. And then if we look at our summation of forces in the y, we get, uh, we can move this over to the other side and that will give us n equals w cosine of theta. And since we know what w is, which is are 10 kilonewtons from the problem. That means that we can actually solve both of these. So we know theta now and we know w. So we can say F equals 10 kilonewtons times the sine of 21.8 degrees. And that gives us F equals 3,700 newtons. And our normal force is going to be, again, 10 kilonewtons times cosine of that 21.8 degrees. And that gives us 9,300 newtons. And again, we can rewrite whoop, those components over here. Uh, we could even add back in our 
arrow notations. And so those are our final answers. So now we know the values of all of the forces that are acting on that car. Um, so the friction, which is acting upwards up the ramp, is this 3700. And the normal force, which is acting perpendicular to the ramp, is the 9300 newtons. And that's how you solve that problem.